Oh, hey, what's up guys? It's Brian House here for Housework. Well, today it's Thanksgiving and I hope that you are stuffed full of good food and you're making solid memories with the people that you love. I hope that you've had a very blessed year so far as I have and I really do wish the best for all of you. Um, getting together for Thanksgiving, I kind of feel like we don't do it enough. Every time I get together with my family and sit down and have a meal, I always think, man, we just don't sit down around this table enough. We should do this more. But I guess that's what makes Thanksgiving so um, special, right? So anyhow, I want you to know I appreciate you, and I hope that your bellies are full, your life is going well, and so on. Um, I've got kind of some cool things to discuss real quick. Uh, I've got, of course, I'm starting, and you saw in the last video, I talked about starting the next 2x72 build. Uh, I've done a lot of thinking about that, and I started working out a design, putting it into a 3D uh, a SketchUp program so I can kind of come up with some of the, uh, the ideas that I want to change on the one that I built before. And I thought about, you know, how the motor mounts to the frame itself and the, how it needs to be positioned in such a way where it can't vary, you know, it can't have any sort of, it's got to be precision. It has to match up everything. And with tube steel, that's really tough to do. However, we're going to do it. I'm going to build one because I feel like if you can do it with tube steel, that opens up a whole nother lot, layer of people who can actually build and utilize a 2x72 grinder. I fully believe in that project. I think there isn't enough done in that world. I think we just, you know, the more design, research and development and engineering that can go into that thing is, um, if I change the way I do things in my shop anyhow, it, even if it weren't for knife making, you know my, my, my stance on the 2x72 grinder. It is a fantastic tool and it should become more and more popular so i'm going to build another one with the with the tube steel using that same design but we're going to kind of modify it slightly because i think that there's some there's some things like the base for instance it can be smaller and then i need to move the frame all the way to the far right side of the base so that there's more clearance on the outside if you use a bigger drive wheel things like that just small little tweaks Mostly based around clearance, by the way. Clearance is like a really, every single time I'm building something, I always say, do I have clearance? Uh, you know, I need to make, make sure that things are going to be able to move and turn and all that. The exciting news is that I purchased the Crossfire Pro from Langmuir Systems. The CNC plasma cutter, I went ahead and had them deck it all out with all the bells and whistles and everything else. And the reason I did that was because I really want to design, build, and manufacture 2x72 grinders. And I think I could do it right here in this studio. I want to do it, but I want to do it in a way where we are designing it together. And I felt like the only way I was going to be able to create different designs was by having the capability of using a plasma, like a CNC plasma cutter that would actually allow me to create something, modify it, create something, modify it, create something. Hopefully we don't have a ton of that. <laughs> I mean, the cost of the steel and the product and everything would be uh, horrendous. But I, I believe that if we all put our heads together, we can come up with a really amazing product. And um, just recently, Alex Steele is partnering with someone uh, in Australia to make, design, and build grinders for him in, and have them uh, shipped to Montana. Well, I think we should build them right here in the U.S. And I know there's other companies that do it, and I'm not trying to step on their toes, but I really want to spend some time learning how to make this happen, come to fruition. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger on the CNC machine, the, the Crossfire Pro from Langmuir Systems. It will not ship until April of 2020. So the cost, I saved myself a little bit of money by purchasing the device now when they're done with it, you know, putting it all together and shipping it out. I think they're doing one round early 2020 and then they're going to do a second quarter uh, delivery in April. So 
Very exciting stuff. And we're going to set it up right here in the shop. The other use, the other purpose of that is I would really like to start uh, plasma cutting my knife blanks and then also plasma cutting knife blanks for sale. So if you see a design or you're a knife maker and you want a whole bunch of the same design uh, punched out of 1095, 80 CRV2, whatever it is, uh, you're going to be able to just send me the CAD file or I'll modify the, the drawing or whatever and pump it into the system and lay it out on a sheet and print out, uh, you know, cut out 10 or 20 blanks all at once. Uh, that's a business I think that could, you know, you know, maybe pay for itself. I'm not really sure exactly. I don't have a whole lot of numbers on any of that, to be honest. But I know there's a lot of guys selling knife blanks. But what I've, from what I've read, is that a lot of people are concerned about the steel they're using because they're using, they're telling you it's 1095 or they're telling you it's whatever, but then they get it and it's not actually that. So if you buy through me, I stand behind what I'm doing and so on. So um, that's another business concept idea. But yeah. So getting back to the 2x72 tube steel grinder, a couple of you have commented in and asked me, hey, are you going to be doing that before or around Christmas or at least before it? Uh, the answer is yes. That has already actually begun, and I am um, just in now in the process of cutting all the pieces out, filming that process, and then we're going to talk about how do you actually put it all together so that when you go to turn it on, the tracking works, you know, the, these kinds of things. And I have to break it down into a series just because, you know, the original video that I produced, I filmed that over the course of like two weeks, you know, putting all that together and then editing it all. And it took about a month. This process is we're going to be talking about what I'm doing. So if you've got a welder and you've got access to steel, you're going to be able to essentially recreate what I'm doing. And I'm going to give you all the breakdown of all the hardware and everything I've used and then the cost associated with all of that as well. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a series of videos. What I want from you is if you want to learn something in particular, uh, how do I lay down a good MIG weld? Or uh, I want to learn how to, you know, countersink certain holes. Or I want to learn how to tap something. If you tell me that now, I'll be able to put that in those videos so that you guys are learning from things. Because these are all things that I've picked up over the years, working with steel, working with wood. Uh, you know, sometimes I take it for granted. You know, I'm like putting it all together. I'm going, well, somebody might not know how to make a countersink in a piece of mild steel. How, what does that look like? What kind of device do you use? Do you drill a, a, a pilot hole? You know, so on, so on. All of those things I sort of take for granted because I grew up around it. Um, now... I'm filming it going, I wonder if people really know the difference between an argon shielding gas and an argon and carbon dioxide mix. Uh, you know, somebody, a welder friend of mine gave me that tip. Hey, use an argon and CO2 mix and your welds will lay flatter. Oh, all right. Uh, you know, get away from flux core. Flux core is splattery and makes a mess. Use solid core wire. Oh, you know, just one little tip like that change the way I weld. And I'm still a terrible welder, <laughs> but, but those little tips made me a better welder. And if you tell me that right off the bat and you say, hey, I'd really like you to kind of go into that series and dig down a little deeper into those subjects, uh, let's do that together. Let's learn together. Um, and you can watch me uh, mess up a ton of welds. But anyway, so getting back to Thanksgiving, I really want you to know how much I appreciate all the subscribes, all the likes, all the comments. My last video was sort of existential in terms of discussing some pretty heavy subjects. You know, when we're, you know, equating building a knife and sort of life mastery, you know, I'm sitting there wondering, does anyone really care about that? And what I found was that a lot of you did and do. That video by far had more comments than any other video I think I've made in a long time. And the comments were well thought out and you guys really sent me a lot of really positive energy. Got some negatives too, you know, that's part of YouTube. Um, but I feel like re-energized by that. You know, by hearing from you, it makes this all worth it, you know. If, if I build a business around YouTube, if I take this workshop and I create, you know, 
uh, I build a two by 72 grinder business that um, employs four or five people um, and generates some income for me. The probably still my most favorite part is actually talking to you guys. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but the path that I took to get here is very odd. In fact, somebody commented on my video the other day about, hey, I, I found your channel because you did all that boat stuff years ago and um, I'm not into knife making, so I'm leaving or whatever. And um, I get that, you know, <clears throat> my channel had, you know, a, a bunch of people on there because I was rebuilding a boat and that, you know, for a lot of reasons, I can't do that anymore. So, you know, ultimately the common thread with what I'm doing with this project with YouTube is, has always been the fact that I love learning. I'm very curious also, but I love the community, the interaction, you know, meeting new people of like mind. There's just like no other platform where I feel like I could go out create something and then get feedback like I get it on YouTube, even though there's a lot of negative too, but I feel like I'm finding the people through this format that I connect with because you watch something I did and you resonated with it and you made, you, you know, you, you made a connection with me. I don't connect with people like I should. You know, I know that I have a hard time with it in my my day to day life. And it's because I've always felt like I'm not like everyone else. You know, people meet me and learn about me and they're like, oh, he's a super interesting guy. I'm a great guy to have at a party, you know, because I got tons of stories about a lot of weird shit. But ultimately, no one really understands my way of thinking. They don't look at me and think he's normal. You know, they look at me and think he's interesting or he's weird. Um, but after being that way for 42 years on this earth, you get used to that. But you also keep people at arm's length. And I think what I really like about YouTube is that um, I don't have to do that here. I can be weird. I can do whatever I want and film it and the right people will find it eventually. And they'll comment in and tell me about it. So... Um, and th that's you guys. Anyway, again, I didn't mean to go on this long. I really wanted you to, um, to know that I was thinking about all of you guys, uh, this Thanksgiving, and I hope you'll continue along with me in this journey of building grinders, knife making, um, industrial tool design, you know, whatever we get into, I really hope you come along with me. So anyhow, thanks so much guys. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework.